right? Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm representing the Pennsylvania League of Women Voters, and I'm right here from Warren, Pennsylvania. Some of the questions have already been answered that are in the document that I'll give you later. The one that has not is the prevention regarding seismic activity. Warren County historically, uh, earthquake activity is certainly insignificant compared to other areas. However, in 1998, a magnitude of 5.2 earthquake occurred 69 miles away from our area. A smaller magnitude quake of 4.4 and also 3.4 shook this region in 2001, and 3.6 magnitude events happened in 1993 and 94. Deep well injection sites have been correlated with increasing number and magnitude of earthquakes across the country. This includes Texas, Colorado, Arkansas, and our neighboring Ohio. Such seismic activity not only creates service disturbances, but also increases the potential of migrating of toxic materials into our aquifers. Did the Bear Lake properties do seismic testing prior to the construction? Are other types of injection wells are required to do extensive geological investigation and the seismic testing? Class two wells, such as this, are exempt from such precautions. Such an ounce of prevention would seem prudent for our Warren County. This is even more imperative given that class one and class two wells often are dealing with the same type of chemical waste but from different sources. Anybody have a reaction to that? Well, let me cover a couple of points. One is um, there are naturally occurring uh, seismic activities that occur with plate shifting and tectonic activities um, in the earth. There's a lot of uplift around the Great Lakes um, and many of those those tremors that have historically occurred in this area, and, and we've checked um, to find the occurrence of tremors in this area, um, you know, have not been associated with oil and gas activity. Um, there are also uh, several seismometers um, in the vicinity. Um, there's one in State College, there's one north of Pittsburgh, and there's one in Franklin, um, which, we, which we verified actually are you know, basically triangulated in this area and would pick up any additional information. Um, the agency is also in the process of doing um, a detailed study about some of the injection related um, occurrences of seismic activity. Um, what they're basically seeing is that um, if a well is completed to what's considered the Precambrian, which is basically above, just above the mantle, um, it has the potential to cause the tectonic plates to slide. Um, what we have, and also if you're injecting at a very high pressure, yes. that has the potential to do that. Um, what we have in Pennsylvania are, are several safeguards. One is we've had some deep wells operating um, much deeper than, than this formation up in Erie for over 30 years um, into the Bass Island. Um, Gatesburg, I'm sorry, um, and have had no issues at all. And actually, what we're seeing and what the study is leaning towards is as long as the injection formation is depleted oil and gas formation, um, you're basically refilling pore space. Um, what we also require, as as, as I've been outlined in the permit, is that the permittee is not permitted to fracture the injection formation. You must either propagate existing fractures or create new fractures in order for seismic activity to, to, to slip on a, on a, on a fault. Um, if you're not causing fractures, you're not going to cause seismic activity generally. And what we've got is um, what we have permitted historically, both for our enhanced recovery as well as our uh, the brine disposal wells that have been permitted are basically depleted oil and gas bearing sands that have the capacity to um, absorb and repressurize um, the existing formations. Not formations that are very deep into the Precambrian formations that need significant pressure in order to make them receive the fluids. Um, the situation in Ohio was a situation where it was a Precambrian well. It was about 9,000 feet. Uh, the intended injection formation was about 6,000 feet, and that additional 3,000 feet was not plugged as was supposed to have been done. 
and they and that additional 3,000 feet of, of surface hydrostatic head um, created significant injection pressures, which would have caused fractures. Um, and so we've got a number of safeguards built into the federal program that the states don't necessarily have to have exactly. And actually, Ohio has enacted some um, additional safeguards, basically, um, to include new things like continuous monitoring um, of the volume and pressure, which has always been a part of the Pennsylvania program through the EPA. I'd like to thank the league, too, for your question and comments you sent into the the DEP, we received them, and we, I did distribute them. Where did you go?